A safe to store valuable items has a lock that requires the user to select three values from a set of 45 values. The sequence or combination needed to open the safe can have repeated values, so a sequence like 25, 25, 3 is possible. How many different sequences or lock combinations are possible for a safe like this one? All right, so the first thing you want to do is try to identify what they're asking you to do. Notice it doesn't say find the probability anywhere in this problem, so it's not a probability question. In fact, what they're saying here is how many different something is possible, right? So they're counting something, right? They're saying how many ways can you do something, how many different sequences of something can you create, etc. So the how many indicates they want you to count up something. That means it's a counting problem. Now the way you should tackle all counting problems is to start with the idea that, hmm, is this counting problem that I'm facing a combination? Or am I being asked to count the number of combinations possible? Or is it something else? We want to tackle it first by thinking about combinations because it turns out that it's very common to make a mistake that involves us using a technique like the fundamental counting rule or the permutation formula in a place where combinations is appropriate. So if we start with combinations and see if something meets the requirements for combinations first, then when it is a combination, we'll do the problem correctly and we won't make the common error of using something like fundamental counting rule incorrectly. So we start with the idea, is it a combination problem? And then eliminate that if possible. If we can eliminate it as an option, then the fundamental counting rule will always work. It might sometimes be faster to solve it with the permutation formula, but the fundamental counting rule and the permutation formula actually yield the same results. So there's no reason to actually use the permutation formula other than a matter of convenience. So let's go ahead and try to tackle the problem using combinations first, see if it fits that mold. If it doesn't fit as a combination, then we'll abandon that and we'll go to fundamental counting rule. So let's begin with the three questions you need to ask yourself about counting problems if you want to determine if they're combinations or not. So there's a lot of phrases in here that indicate combination, right? It seems to mention the fact that it's a combination lock, but remember that that's a phrase used in English to describe a certain type of lock that isn't necessarily related to the mathematical operation combination. So we want to kind of step away from the English definition of combination here and, and not associate it necessarily with the math definition. So let's go ahead and think about the three criteria. The first thing is, are we taking our items from a subset from a set of n items? In other words, are we drawing a subset? So are we taking some items from a set of items? Well, it looks like it says that there are these numbers from 1 to 45, and we're going to select three of them to do our log combination. So it kind of fits that, right? It seems like we're taking three numbers for our combination from a set of 45 numbers. So it sort of fits that first criteria, right? It's not too hard to see how that's similar. All right, so let's step away from that first question and go to the next one then, because it seems like maybe the first question is a yes. The second question is, does order matter when talking about the results, right? So in other words, look at this example they gave us, 25, 25, 3. If that's your combination to open your lock, would it be okay to put the numbers in a different order? Could I open the lock with a 25, 3, 25? Well, I think you should probably, you know, realize at that point that that's not correct, right? It's it's not true that a combination lock will work regardless of the order in which you put the combination in, right? We kind of know, I think, from experience or at least from seeing it in the movies that the numbers have to go in the right position, the right sequence, right? You can't do 25, 3, 25 and expect the lock to open if the combination is 25, 25, 3. So it has to be put in the proper order in order for it to work. Well, that's contrary to what combinations require, right? So if you're talking about a mathematical combination, the order has to be unimportant. In other words, if your combination lock opens with 25, 25, 3, it should then also open with 3, 25, 25, or we're not dealing with a mathematical combination, right? So I don't think it's a combination for that reason. There's another thing we could check, though. The third question is also um, going to be a no, and, and it needs to be a yes for all three of these questions in order for you to use combinations. It's also not true that repetitions are not allowed. That's what's required for combinations, right? So something, if something is a mathematical combination, the selections must be made without replacement. So when you have these numbers from 1 to 45, it means if you choose the value 25 to be used, you don't have it available for another selection. It's already taken and being used, and you can't go back and get another one. There aren't any more. So you've taken out the 25. There's no more 25s left. So there's no way you could have a combination like 25, 25. That would not be okay if you're dealing with combinations. So this 
is not a combination. That's not what we're counting here. So we can abandon that approach, and that's good because now we know fundamental counting rule will work to solve the problem. Now, to do it with fundamental counting rule, we've got to create three spaces. And why am I creating three spaces? Because there are three steps here to this problem. Step one is to choose the first number. Step two is to choose the second number. Step three is to choose the third number, right? So if this is your first value or your first number that's going to be chosen, the question is, how many options do you have? That's how you use fundamental counting rule. You have to ask yourself how many options exist for your first or second or third choice, whichever one you're dealing with. So in this case, we're looking at the first value and we're asking how many options are there for the first value? Well, there are 45 numbers to choose from, so we have 45 options for the first value. Now we'd go to the second value and we'd ask the same question, right? Simple question, how many options exist for that number. Now sometimes you can't repeat values so you'd have to take one away. You'd have to say well not 45 but 44 but here we said we could repeat. It's possible to use the same number three times if we want. We could use a combination of 25, 25, 25. So there's no reason why we can't choose the same number again so we'll say there are 45 options still for the second value and then of course for the third value it's the same answer, right? Again we have 45 different numbers to choose from. So this is 45 to the third power which if you want to know what that is, we can pull that up with a calculator and try to solve that. So 45 to the third power of 45 cubed is 91,125. So 91,125. So it would certainly take you a very long time to do that manually by hand if you wanted to try every different possible combination.